Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Hi guys, welcome to the another fresh video on co-tutor. And with this, we are going to start a fresh tutorial series on Jetpack Compose. So right now, in this particular video, this is where you are. I am just going to give you a very brief walkthrough of what this tutorial series is going to comprise of. So after this, in the further part of the series, we will get started with something very basic as introduction to Jetpack Compose. And here we try to understand the basic philosophy behind how Composable works, what are the influences that it is taking from, what is inheritance and what is composition because inheritance was the concept that we used to use in the older way of implementing the UI. Uh, but now it is composition. Composables work on the concept of composition. So we need to understand how it is slightly different and how we need to rewire our thinking. And we are also transitioning from imperative to declarative programming with the composables. So we need to understand the a little bit of paradigm shift that we have to make with Jetpack Compose. Moving forward, we will then talk about implementing a very simple hello world using Jetpack Compose. This is where you try to understand very basics of what a composable is, what are the dependencies that you have to add in your Gradle file in your Android Studio and then do a very basic setup to get started with the Jetpack Compose. I will also try to give you a brief comparison between how things were done earlier and now with Jetpack Compose so that people who are coming from the very old style of XML based UI development in Android native development should have some kind of a orientation to understand how things will be different using Jetpack Compose. And then we will actually get in the thick of the things using customization. We will get started with greater detail about the composables. There are things like modifiers, styles, themes and shape, color fonts, surface. Then you will also understand how to make columns, how to modify the alignment of the composables in the screen, row, how to add an image and there is a concept of scaffold, how to use that to construct your screens. So it is quite a lot of things and this part of the tutorial series is going to be quite hectic. Expect a quiet detailed walkthrough with demos on these concepts. And then we move on to event handling in Jetpack Compose. So it's all about how to capture the data, how to render the data, how to do the state management and how do you pass the data between the composables something very basic that you would do as an android developer and then we further delve into navigation because at the end of the day your android application contains not just one screen it has multiple screens in jetpack compose each screen is a composable so the data that is captured in one compose need to be forwarded to another compose so you will understand the parameters passing screen navigation what happens to the activity and fragment with the jetpack compose then parameter passing between the screens between the composables on the same screen navigation graph composable stack which is a kind of fragment stack or activity stack that you might have heard of or used earlier so that will be a quite deep dive in those concepts and then we will look into the concept of scrollable list which if you recall was usually typically implemented using recycler view so here in this case we will use lazy column concept that jetpack introduces with the composables so that is something that any android developer need to know how to render a list in an efficient manner but to do that you should have to go through this long journey last but not the least we are going to do all of this in Kotlin because Jetpack Compose mainly works with Kotlin and it is best done with Kotlin. So if you are not familiar with Kotlin, then what I suggest is you can take your time, learn Kotlin and then come back here. I even have a very detailed Kotlin tutorial series on Code Tutor. So it's a 55 part series. If you go through those whole videos, you should be 
pretty comfortable going through these videos basically the idea is if you go through this tutorial series you should be able to master the modern android ui development from scratch that's the whole intention of this particular tutorial series so i am really excited to get started with series and demystify the coding that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye